Community Development Council of Quinty is a not-for-profit agency. We've been in existence for next year will be our 35th anniversary. Um, so expect big things next year. Um, so where our work is twofold. We do run some food security programs, the Good Food Box, Good Baby Box, and Community Gardens. And all of our programs, the big difference with what we do compared to what some other um, not-for-profits do is we're not a charity model. So we're a self-help model. So we're a hand up, not a hand down. So people are participating in the programs by paying. Um, that be like 50% less than retail, but they're still saving money, but yet they're a participant. And um, so a lot of our people who are using our programs are what we would term the working poor. And um, just helping to stretch their dollar and eat better and babies to have formula and we love our community garden program as well. It's, um, I know I only have three minutes, don't worry. Um, community garden program, we are growing that program, pardon the pun, every year and we're up to 153 raised beds. So I love that program because it's a skill building um, program that people are actually learning to grow their own food and save money as well. We also do social planning and right now we have a big project going on which you're gonna hear a lot about next year. And it's an asset mapping project in the city of Belleville. So we're going to be doing some research looking at what resources are out in the community, maybe that we're not using, what assets, and how we can make some new connections and um, build more local food into our community. So a lot of you here, we may be phoning you, calling you, interviewing you. So I hope when we do, when you hear from us, that you're able to participate. So that's our three minutes. There. For anybody who participated in the Not A Trade Show Business Expo, that was kind of a hit. So you got three minutes to tell us about you. So we joked that this is all they had. So Alyssa, she knows how to read it. I'm not, I'm not, oh. This is, should I use words? Sure. Okay, this might be better. I'm not going to be pitching, but I will give you the high level of what Nomad Creative is all about. So I founded the agency in 2018 from a side hustle that I started while working as a flight attendant. So it was really a combination between my two passions of design and travel. I had studied design in school, so kind of wanted to bring those two together. And Nomad Creative at this point is a full service creative agency, so we help build, launch, and grow brands using marketing, branding, website, and social media initiatives. Um, it's something that you know I really love and I'm passionate about. I've come to the Quinney West area in the last three years, but really started it out of Montreal, moved to Toronto, hence the nomad in me, um, with my husband being a pilot in the Air Force. So that's what brought me here. Um, and that's kind of the essence of, of Nomad Creative. We'll get into the juicy details in the next question. So <laughs> go for it. Uh, so as Joe mentioned, uh, we my three minutes is restarting. Huh? Yes, it is. Okay, so as Jill mentioned, uh, we opened in 2014 as Pegasus Cheer Athletics. So those of you in uh, in this room may recognize that brand. Coming into our tenth year, we have rebranded to Zone Athletics, and the reason why we rebranded is because we do way more than cheer in our community. So we started out as a recreational and competitive cheerleading gym. And we have, I wouldn't say quickly, because it's been 10 years, uh, but we have morphed into something that offers so much more to our community. So we offer more recreational programs. So not only do we offer recreational cheer, we also offer tumbling. We also offer uh, Quinney Area's only parkour gym. Um, as well as the area's largest summer camp program. So calling us Pegasus Cheer just didn't really fit anymore. Uh, we're very community oriented in our gym, um, which again we'll get into uh, during the next question, but uh, it's a passion of ours to help the local families and the local children in our area and to give something back to a community that helped raise myself and my family. Thank you. And you're just 30 seconds. <laughs> and I'll just offer, Christiane had supplied us some, with some notes. So she wanted to share that the Richmond is a boutique style retirement community that offers a safe and comfortable atmosphere for those wanting to live an independent lifestyle with a peace of mind 
knowing they have assistance available to them should they want or need it. The Richmond is an ideal place for inspired senior living, with lifestyle options that allow our residents to age gracefully in a place they love, with the support of a dedicated team of professionals on hand 24-7. They can greet life's changes with courage, confidence, and enthusiasm. Every day, the Richmond Retirement Residence offers new opportunities with enriching activities, an active social community, and specialized seniors programming to invigorate the mind, body, and spirit. The health and wellness of our residents is paramount. Our team of health and wellness professionals oversee the safety and well-being of each resident and work closely with our residents and their families to ensure their care needs are met with dignity and respect. Our chef-inspired dining experiences are second to none, and often when residents are asked why they love the Richmond so much, the food is often our top response. Our menu boasts a variety of delicious and healthy options providing our residents with nutritious meals that are made fresh in our kitchen daily. The Richmond Life Enrichment Team encourages active aging through inspired living. A positive mindset for a strong spirit is bolstered through active aging. Sharing experiences, interests, and talents creates opportunities for our residents to discover new things about themselves and continue to enjoy what's always brought, by that, brought vitality to their lives. The Richmond Retirement Residence first opened in 1984 as the first retirement residence in Belleville. In the nearly 40 years of operation, we have supported countless residents, their families, and the community at large. Because we have a solid community reputation for providing excellence in services and resident experiences, it is no wonder we are now starting to welcome our second and third generation Richmond residents to our home. So now I'm going to pass it back to Liz to answer our second question, which is, each of you operate in such different sectors and have celebrated different milestones in your journey. So I'd like you, who are celebrating 10 years now, to tell us a bit about how you feel you connect to your sector. We talked a little bit about specialized services. And what separates you from the wins or challenges other might experience? We talked about yeah, that whole specialized service is a bit of a challenge, but go ahead. And you, I mean, you know. Tell us, how, tell us about your wins and challenges or what separates you or what makes you unique. Well, whatever we're the it's only you. cheerleading gym. That's <laughs> kind of we're the only parkour gym. That's kind of unique too. Tell us a little bit more about parkour because you keep using that word. I'm like, oh. Other than going for the tour, I wouldn't know. Oh, that's true. Okay, so you know when you're watching in movies and you see those people jumping from building to building and hopping over cars? We don't do that. But, <laughs> But we do start to teach children and adults, believe it or not, the basics of that. So uh, the parkour classes in our gym, we have adult parkour classes, adult tumbling, to allow um, members of our community that are a little bit older that maybe still want to play or want to go back to play, an opportunity to come and do it in a safe environment. They also, we actually actually start, uh, actually, actually, that was good. Uh, we actually start way younger uh, with parkour. They actually start at the age of two, and it's called Ninja Tots. And then we have mini ninjas for our preschoolers, and then we go into parkour. But it's all pretty much the same idea where they jump and tumble, and they do wall runs, and they do, oh my gosh, like you actually have to come and see it, because it's a ton of fun, the kids have a blast. And when the coaches do the skill that they're teaching the kids, the kids are all like, wow, because they can't believe somebody's so old <laughs> can do that. <laughs> so, so that's pretty much what sets us apart, actually, is we offer a lot of programs in our community that the kids and adults don't necessarily get anywhere else. We have so many youth and recreational sports in our area that are fabulous. The amount of dance studios that we have in the Queen area is amazing. There's a lot of choice. Um, the fact that we have a fantastic gymnastics club, we're just a little bit different from them. We offer them uh, something that's a little bit more challenging, something that you can't necessarily get within the area. So you know, when it comes to uh, cheerleading and parkour, that's really what sets us apart from, from our competitors. So truly a specialized service. It's very specialized, yeah. It's very, very, very much. Um, and, and cheerleading itself within Canada is still quite young. Like, it's only a few decades old, which, I mean, 
Like right? Like in the States, it's like 100 years old. But in Canada, to bring a competitive sport into Canada has only been about 40 years or so. And we're in at 10 years, and it still feels like sometimes like we're a brand new gym, even though we've been open for so long. Thank you. And Alyssa, I think what you represent as a young entrepreneur, that was the category that you were nominated in. What, what are your unique challenges? What are you facing now? At, as kind of this at this milestone. Are we doing the challenges question? Yeah. <laughs> yeah what are we hopping yeah. over? Yeah. But well, I'll say well, this this is kind of it's just kind of where you are in your cool. journey and yeah, tell us how you connect to your sector and Yeah, I think I think what differentiates my experience versus someone else who may have started an agency, not to say that no one did things similarly to the way I did them. But um, I started my career as a graphic designer in 2011. So I worked as a freelancer. I knew what it was like to work as a freelancer. But I also knew what it was like to work for other brands. So I worked in-house at a lot of different fashion companies and um, also worked within an agency. So I had the agency experience. I had the brand experience. I had the freelance experience. And in doing that, I was really able to understand how these businesses operated in the different ways in the back end as well as the different jobs required to get things done. So I'm sure many of you know as entrepreneurs, you kind of wear all these hats, whether you're you know, a graphic designer, a web developer, a social media manager, all of these things. Um, and even though I came in as, as a role either as a designer or a creative director, which is eventually kind of the trajectory of my career, um, you do dip your toes in a lot of these different departments and areas. So having had that experience and knowledge, I think helped me and prepared me to create a business that I was proud of and basically do all the things that I liked and noticed that I enjoyed in working for these other companies and agencies and take away the things that I didn't. So a big part of the way that I run my agency is with my values first. Like I care a lot about the people that work for me and the people that work that, that who are my clients, right? It's It goes two ways. I'm not just here trying to get any client to make money. It really matters who our clients are to me and to us and to my team. At the end of the day, it's my responsibility to make sure that whoever I bring on for my team to work on is going to respect them. It's a job that's exciting, that's fun. Um, so really kind of bringing the values into the mix has been a big differentiator. And then the fact that I have a really good understanding of all of the different um, tasks and jobs required within an agency. So being full service, we have a marketing team, we have a branding team, we have a web team, we have a social team, we have a paid media team. And I've dabbled in each of those. Naturally, I'm strongest in brand because that's what I studied, but I made sure to educate myself in every single one of those departments, and I continue to be that student. I don't put myself above anyone in my company. Whenever I hire someone, I tell them, bring things forward. You're not just coming and following a scope of work and a project and our processes. I want you to come in and give your two cents on what you think we could do better because everyone has their unique experience and I truly believe that if you rely on the people and you trust the people, that's what's going to differentiate you um, from others. Thanks. And from a young entrepreneur perspective, I think that's maybe a little misleading in terms of the fact that you've had a 12-year career. Yeah. <laughs> and, or even longer. So young entrepreneur because you're young enough to be called young. But <laughs> I'm 30. <laughs> Excellent. Are we giving our age? <laughs> no, because that means I have to go to the Richmond tomorrow. <laughs> Inspired living. Thank you. I was actually at the Richmond a couple weeks ago with Christina, our staff person too. We were doing a presentation there and everything that you said about the Richmond is very true. Lovely people and it's a beautiful spot and I thought, hmm, maybe someday, you know, I might be there. Um, we're, of course, I'm in the not-for-profit sector, which a lot of times people separate from the business sector. We are part of the chamber. So I think one thing to remember is that we are still a business in that respect. Um, we do, I have HR, I have employees, we have to pay, you know, we have to do all our government forms and we have to pay all these things just like everybody else does. And um, so just, there's a lot of commonality there um, between businesses and not-for-profit sector. So that's why we became a member. Um, because in getting to know you and getting to know other businesses, there are a lot of things we can take away from how somebody runs business, like 
I'm going after her and I feel like, <laughs> what do I get to say? Here's the mic. Um, anyway, so I think we're in the not-for-profit sector, one thing is like when we were nominated, it's, as they always say, it's a huge privilege to be nominated even if you don't win. And it truly, truly is. But there were so many other agencies nominated. I think there was like 18. And I just thought, wow. Like, and I looked down the list and could see like a lot of the agencies we've worked with before, right? We've, because we collaborate and we work together and we very rarely do anything alone because that's what community development is. And so when I was looking at the list and we were all looking at the list as staff, we're like, wow, these are huge agencies and everybody's done such good work. And I, if I wasn't so surprised when I won, I probably would have said that that night, but I was a little flustered because I was truly shocked that we won. But anyway, I think with our work, like I said before, we're, we're not a charity model, we are a self-help model. Another um, big part of what we do is outreach. So when I first started, we were um, doing um, our programs maybe in a couple areas. It was very Belleville-centric. But now we go to 20 different communities in Hastings and Prince Edward to bring the good food box and bring the good baby box. So we're getting into some of those areas, which are truly my passion, um, areas where people don't have what we have in an urban center, right? They don't have a grocery store. They, they live next to a convenience store where things are 20 times the price. And um, convenience stores are necessary if anybody here runs one, but, um, you know, in these little rural areas, they just don't have access, they don't, you know, they have to travel so far to get to anywhere, so we connect with 20 different businesses or other agencies and bring our program's truck, we literally rent trucks and bring the food to people, and those are the areas where I think most of our team are really passionate about getting that food, getting formula to babies where people don't have access to that, and I think um, the other thing that we do is we are very much a team, so, um, and I try to let my team members be out in the community as much as I, because I don't want people to say that's Ruth's agency. I want people to say that's CDC Quinney and this is their team. It isn't my agency, it's a team. And if it wasn't for businesses and people who support us, we wouldn't even be where we're at, right? So I um, like to... I, our team very much contributes, works together. Um, we don't, I very rarely make a decision without saying, hey, what do you guys think of this if we go ahead and do this? Because, you know, it's really important for people to feel like they're part of a team, they're contributing, and I want them to grow, just like I've grown in 22 years in my position, and I've moved from baby box coordinator to executive director. I want people in, in our agency um, to grow as well. Is that my three minute? <laughs> Is that what you're doing? <laughs> anyway, that's, I'll end there. That's a good cue for me to end. Thank you. <laughs> and the Richmond says that they have a long history of service and business excellence in the Quinney area, and they were the first retirement home to open in Belleville and have served countless families since. For them, their successes and milestones are leveraged on multiple points, with some key areas of focus as resident satisfaction, employee satisfaction, regulatory compliance, and operational excellence. Above all, we live by the values of our parent company for senior living to uh, create a resident-centric environment where our seniors are inspired to experience fulfillment, whatever that means to them. It is for this, among many other reasons, Verb Senior Living proudly accepted the award of Canada's Best Managed Companies for 2023. Resident satisfaction is measured annually as part of our resident survey. Since its inception, our survey scores remain on par with or exceed industry standards with some service areas, namely staff, reaching an overall satisfaction percentage close to 90%. Annually, the survey is what is used to guide and direct the strategic plans for the operations team. On a daily, weekly, and monthly basis, we monitor our resident satisfaction through multiple channels. We use technology to assist us in tracking overall engagement, including maintenance requests, recreation participation, wellness needs, and dietary concerns. In addition to that, we foster an environment where the team is empowered to be empathetic and make the right choices for the residents as individuals. Employee satisfaction and engagement is paramount to our success. Healthcare is a difficult field to recruit in, and the retirement sector is more challenging without the support of the government to subsidize the cost for team members. 
We have a process in place for an annual survey for our team members, as well as onboarding surveys completed after 90 days of hire, and offboarding surveys completed within 30 days of departing the role. As with the resident survey, the results of these drive the overall strategic um, direction for the home and provide incredible insight into what we do well and what we need to do better. This is exemplified in the longevity of many of our team members. On a team of only just over 30, we have 15 who have been with us for more than five years. Of that, nine have exceeded their 10-year anniversary with us. One team member has been with the Richmond team for 34 out of the 39 our residents have been opening. The final piece that helps us define success and ultimately drives our business milestones is our regulatory compliance. Our industry has several governing bodies that oversee our operations. The RHRA is the regulatory body that specifically oversees the operations of licensed retirement homes in Ontario. Part of their role is to complete inspections based on complaints, investigations, and routine inspections at least once every three years. In addition to the RHRA, we follow regulations including fire code, employment standards, and health unit, among others. The culmination of these three pillars is a business that has stood the test of time and positioned to continue to leverage that success into the future. And I just want to say that for anybody who's completed the nomination form, this is some of the detail that usually goes into that. So she's got the benefit of being able to write this out and have me read it. But I will say that the nomination process is a bit daunting. For sure. So definitely. Yeah. So we've got a couple people who have worked just as hard to fill out their application that didn't receive an award, and then a couple that have. So we're going to go on to the third question. We have a couple more. Um, is there anything that happened that you wish someone could have warned you about? Was there a mistake made or learning experience you think you could have done without? Maybe not now, but at the moment, because we all know we learn from those circumstances. But in the moment, you wish it didn't happen. I'm going first? Sure. Okay. Um, when I thought about that question, I think for myself, um, you know, I wish when I was in my 20s, I had, I, I wasn't so worried about my social timeline. I mean, when you, I was, you know, in my 20s, I was married and I was telling people at the table, you know, my husband was a musician, so we were traveling and sometimes staying in the back of a van backstage somewhere. And, you know, this is what we did for 10 years. And, um, but friends were all getting their jobs and going on in their careers and having babies and all of that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm way behind in this social, you know, where I'm supposed to be. And then I didn't have kids till I was in my 30s. And then didn't start at CDC till I was in my 40s. Not that I didn't, I was managing a bookstore and stuff before that, whatever. But it's, you know, you, I kind of panicked about not being in that, what, what society has said is your social timeline. And I teach at Loyalist College as well in this SSW program. And I always tell the students, let your journey be your journey. Let, relax. And you may not be doing the same thing that some of your friends are doing, but it's your journey and it's your timeline and you need to relax in it and enjoy it and go where life takes you. And I think um, always like doors open, like for instance, for working at CDC even, I had, I had been thinking, my kids were young, I thought the perfect job, like who wouldn't want this job? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, nine to five. You get a four day weekend every weekend. So I thought, you know what, I need a part-time job and that's what I'm going to look for. And then in the paper, this job was available and it said for good baby box coordinator, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 9 to 5. Like, this is my job. Like, I hadn't even taken the SSW yet at Loyalist. So, I mean, I jumped in, you know, went for the interview and that, you know, so take take chances, take challenges, walk through open doors, you never know where they're going to lead you, and um, relax in your journey. And I wish I someone had told me that in my 20s. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not telling you my age. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think about how to formulate this and kind of where to start. Um, but in general, as an entrepreneur, you know, like there are a lot of ups, there are a lot of downs, it's never really consistent. Um, this is, I'm gonna, I'm hitting about six years of being in business. And my first four years, we doubled in business year after year, organically. Never spent a dime, it was all word of mouth. Very blessed, very grateful, we worked really hard and it paid off. And I got to a point where I was very comfortable. 
And I think that being too comfortable is kind of dangerous when you're running your own business. And so I guess my whole thing, and like what I wish someone would have told me is like, don't get comfortable. <laughs> because what happened was my business, and not to say that it's all just like monetarily, because I do believe that growth is not just due to a monetary amount, there's growth within your business, whether it's your team or your accolades, accomplishments that happen within that year, shifts that you may be making, et cetera. Um, but I think the second that you kind of sit back and you're like, oh yeah, things are good, things are chill, that's when you're gonna see like, hey, actually I do need to work hard in order to see the results that I want. Um, and the next year we basically were stagnant. Like there was no change in the growth of our business and I was like, did we do something wrong? Did we do something different? But, you know, COVID ended, I was traveling, I was living my best life, I was enjoying, you know, like reaping the fruits of my labor, is that the expression? <laughs> um, and reaping the benefits? Oh, yeah, yeah. whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, and not to say that you can't or shouldn't do that, because I do really believe in the whole, like, work-life balance, but I think it's, like, the comfort in realizing, like, it's good when, when you do that you're basically setting yourself up for failure because your business relies on you and as much as you can hire people to make sure that your business runs without you, which is what I've been working on, at the end of the day, no one's gonna do it as good as you. So the second you chill, I feel like that's when you kind of see your business change. So either build your business in a way that it can operate perfectly without you and grow without you. But I feel like for me, the hardest thing or the last thing for me to let go of is the sales process because I'm kind of like the, the one who knows the business best, the one who's able to close the deals and all of that. So, you know, going from being the designer to the creative director to the project manager to all of that and then hiring a team to focus on all of those elements and now just being focused on sales, I feel like that's the one piece that I can't let go of. Um, so, I don't know, what's, what's the question? <laughs> I think what you just said is that the, the challenge that you've reached and that it was kind of becoming complacent and understanding that all of a sudden you can't be comfortable. Yeah, yeah. So, don't get comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think, honestly, I think a lot of entrepreneurs probably feel this way, but really the biggest challenge that I wish somebody had warned me about was the pandemic. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> It, it's three years and being in youth sports and we originally opened to offer the Quinney area a competitive sport that was much more in line with the average family median income in our area. A lot of the times competitive sports are way above and beyond what most people's budgets are. So when the pandemic hit, so let me back up just a little bit. So we started with that idea for the area and offering low, uh, low cost barrier or, or low barrier programs to the area. And as we saw success in the competitive arena, then we started to see more and more success within our business. Our competitive programs then also grew financially. So while we originally started 10 years ago with an $800 program, that same program now is about $2,400. It's a big change. Right before the pandemic, we were set to uh, achieve our largest year yet, both with revenue and with membership. And it was fantastic. We were loving it. Families were happy. Kids were happy. Business was doing really well. And then we got locked down for three years. So being in youth sports, and having that initial mindset of we're here for the kids, we're here for the families. I do still get a little emotional, I apologize, <laughs> um, but we're still here for them. So when the pandemic hit, it really drove home why we opened in the first place. It wasn't about winning national competitions. That's fun, it's great to brag. But that's not why we opened. So when the pandemic hit, we refocused our programs. We went online, we offered uh, all of our membership, we offered free online classes. We did wellness checks with our families. So we would call them. We, I brought staff in a couple of times a week because we were allowed to do that. <laughs> I brought staff in a couple of times a week and we called every single one of our families. 
How are you doing? What do you need? What can we do for you? Do you need somebody to go grocery shopping? Do you need, like, anything? And it really brought us back to where 